In the earlier lecture, we have discussed about Joule-Kelvin effect and also derived expression for Joule-Kelvin coefficient. Today, we will discuss about the liquefaction of helium by Kapitja method. In this experiment, Kapitja used Joule-Kelvin effect as well as adiabatic expansion to liquefy helium gas. The experimental setup is as shown in the diagram. Initially, pure and dry helium gas is enclosed into the compressor P. Now, the gas is compressed to a pressure, high pressure of about 30 atmosphere. That compressor gas will pass into the water bath which is surrounded by in which the cold water is circulating. The heat produced in the helium gas due to the compression is removed by the cold water. Now, this pre-cooled gas, helium gas, will enter into the refrigeration spiral coil which is placed in the liquid nitrogen at minus 208 degree centigrade. This pre-cooled helium gas when it passes through the refrigeration coil is further cooled and its temperature reduced to of about minus 208 degree centigrade and then the gas will now enters into the heat exchanger. In the heat exchanger, the gas will divide it into two parts at the junction A. 90% of the helium gas will passes into the expansion chamber and 10% of the gas, helium gas, will transmitted to the Dewar flask. This gas which is enters into the expansion chamber is again undergo adiabatic expansion and its temperature is further reduced to of about a minus 265 degrees centigrade and that cooled gas will transmit it to the Dewar flask. Now this gas transmitted from the heat chamber will cool the gas coming into the Dewar flask and the liquefied helium will settle into the bottle. The unliquefied gas is again fed back into the compressor and again it is compressed to a high pressure and the process will be repeated. After few cycles, in this process of regeneration, the helium is liquefied and liquefied helium is can be collected at the bottom of the heat exchanger. 